Welcome into our August 2022 NFM Salute. I'm your host, Greg Scher. This one is going to be fascinating as we head down to Richmond, Virginia to welcome in Marine Corporal Jason Walters. Jason, thank you for being with us and thank you for your service. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. You were assigned to Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., also known as 8th and I. I want to start off by saying that this has been quite a lesson for me to learn just how prestigious this assignment was for you. It's the oldest active post in the Marine Corps. It was founded by President Thomas Jefferson and Lieutenant Colonel William Burroughs. Tell us what that is. It is the oldest post in the Marine Corps, also home of the Marine Corps Silent Drill Platoon, the Marine Corps Body Bearers, the Color Sergeant of the Marine Corps, the Colors of the Marine Corps, the Marine Corps Bugle Corps, President's Own, and the Commandant of the Marine Corps happens to reside at the end of the parade deck. And you served in this capacity from 1994 to 1998 in two platoons. The first one was the third platoon company. Uh, ceremonies at the White House were not uh, foreign to you. Burials at the Arlington Cemetery as well. Um, tell us about that experience. We did a lot of the Friday evening parades, uh, had the honor of presiding over uh, funerals in Arlington National Cemetery, providing the firing party and the color guard. Um, we also did uh, events and when dignitaries and people would come to the uh, White House, we would uh, be there as representation of the military. How heavy was it on your heart to take part in those ceremonies where you're burying hero after hero? Presiding over all the you know, burials of our brothers and sisters, and you can't help but live in the gravity of what sacrifices are made. You know, that's why it was such an honor to uh, serve at the Marine Barracks. We took this very personally and did this and represented them and the Marine Corps uh, to the highest level. Let's talk about your second platoon. You went to the Marine Corps Silent Drill Platoon, yeah. and boy, did you go through the grinder to get in there. It was a four and a half month process of uh, seven days a week, uh, 5 a.m. Uh, uniform inspections, stock inspections, to going to Bowling Air Force Base and training from seven o'clock to eight o'clock every evening. And the whole time we are learning, immersing, and getting cut down uh, to about 20. What kind of skill set does it take to be able to uh, march in sync and be able to handle those rifles uh, with such precision? Doing anything that you need to do well, doing it in excess is always the key to learning and getting there. So, you know, it was constant. I mean, just because we got on the team didn't mean that things stopped. I mean, again, now you're in your spot. Now you're out representing the Marine Corps. And, you know, we went, we performed in NFL football halftime shows, NBA events, private events, celebrity events. We trained the fish drill team to represent us in uh, A Few Good Men, the opener of that movie. So, I mean, it was nonstop, 285 days a year. We were out wherever we were called to represent the Marine Corps. Well, and in some ways, the Marine Corps may have saved your life. Well, and, no, it, it, there's no some ways about it. Um, I'd say without the Marine Corps, I don't think I would I don't, well, I would just say that I may or may not be here today. Oh, just, just to let people know why I say that, let me just walk through a couple of the highlights or lowlights of your childhood. Um, your dad and mom uh, divorced at a very young age. She wasn't very supportive. Uh, you were four and a half years old at that time, um, basically without a mom. Your dad remarried when you were just 10 years old. Had to be kind of confusing to being immersed in a new family. You left home at 17 years old. Um, your dad lost a six and a half month battle with brain cancer in 1996. So you were all alone and really struggling. Um, and in 2016, you hit a bottom. For three and a half months, you were homeless. Uh, yeah, it was a rough journey. Yeah, we were uh, the drill. Drill platoon, we were getting ready to leave for England uh, when I was called to report to my uh, commanding officers. Uh, and he proceeded to tell me my father was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Tell us for a moment about your dad. He was uh, in the 101st Airborne. 
um, served the Screaming Eagles uh, during Vietnam. I mean, he had an unfortunate event. He was a, a, a really a great catcher playing on the uh, farm league team for the Pirates um, before he was drafted into Vietnam. And, you know, during his uh, workup for deployment, drug across the field um, and snapped his knees. Um, and he was unable to ever go back and be a catcher again. And uh, he was very proud to see me become a Marine and even prouder he came to many, many, many Friday evening parades. How did you pull yourself out of the homelessness? I remember sitting when I was laying in the back of the car at night, thinking about the day that I wasn't there, the promise I'd make to myself and what I was going to do and what I wasn't going to do and how I was never going to be out of the fight. And I'm sorry I get a little teary out a little bit because it's a lot. And, you know, don't really share those kind of things with your friends and family like you should. And my best friend, came down to just randomly see me, which he never comes down from DC very often. Anyways, he hired me. Um, he, he took a chance on me because he said that it was going to be very challenging, but he thought that if anybody could do it, I could. You co-founded Cloud Warriors in 2019, just as the onset of the pandemic was happening. So yet another blow uh, that you had to overcome, but you now have 34 employees. And I asked you what your mission statement was, man, did you keep it simple? The mission statement is to create jobs for vets. What is Cloud Warriors and how can people get involved? Cloud Warriors is now Skill Bridge certified, allowing transitioning uh, military to come and work with us for three months while they transition to get um, certifications and skills and, and job opportunity. Um, something I didn't have when I got out of the Marine Corps. So right now we have an exclusive uh, deal with Zoom. We're doing engineering for them. And they are mainlining us business so we can hire veterans in as project managers and engineers and train them to do this. I mean, there's so many homeless veterans and things, and it's just because nobody gave them a, nobody gave them a chance. I'm getting ready to have a conversation with a Marine that has a special needs child that is struggling right now and looking for extra income. And I'm going to most likely hire him to be an engineer. And then he's going to move from the East Coast to Arizona, where they have better assistance programs and support for disabled children. And he'll be able to do this job. And the only thing keeping him from moving was the ability to earn an income in a state where he didn't live. I want to lastly talk about the charity that you've chosen to donate $2,500 to Shields and Stripes. It's a treatment facility for PTS for vets first responders, and also nurses coming off of the heels of uh, COVID. Uh, why, why Shields and Stripes? A lot for the man that created it. Steve is uh, an Air Force pararescue jumper, um, served with uh, Marines uh, in Afghanistan, Iraq, multiple tours, comes out, and he was so angry of the lack of ease that it was to get into a VA program or to get some type of quality initial care that he created Stars and Stripes and he created that support. So how could I not give money to somebody that works so hard to help this community? Well, we certainly appreciate your time and your story and sharing so much with us today here and the great work that you're doing at Cloud Warriors. Keep up the incredible work. We look forward to continuing to follow your journey. Thank you for having me here and I really appreciate all the good work you do as well. All right, we'll talk to you soon. I'm Greg Scher from NFM TV. We'll see you again next time.